probability shows up everywhere, especially in board games like Catan, Monopoly, Yahtzee. We've started the tradition when we get a Yahtzee, we all start chanting cheese for some reason, and then we give the dogs cheese, so even they're on board. And of course in any card game like poker or blackjack. The goal of this video is to give you a foundation so that you can solve more and more complex probability problems. We're going to start with the definition of the probability of an event, and it'll always be a fraction. The way I define it is the number of things you're interested in goes up top, divided by the total number of outcomes. Or you could say the favorable outcomes divided by the possible outcomes. As an example, let's say you have a six-sided die and you're interested in what is the probability of rolling a two. Set up our fraction. There's really only one favorable outcome, a two, out of any of the six numbers. And that's fine. You could just leave the probability like that. But for most of us, it's more helpful to see it represented as a percent, so we'll do that. Using a calculator or your phone, go ahead and do top divided by bottom, one divided by six. And that'll give us a number between 0 and 1. And if it was 0, that would be a 0% chance, 0% likelihood, or 100% likelihood if it was a 1. So obviously it's just somewhere in between there. Then you always move the decimal two places over, and that would get a 16.6%. Or we could just round it and call it good at 17%. On the next page, feel free to pause and practice using these two here. Assuming you have these 13 cards or shuffle, then you pick one randomly. What is the probability of selecting a heart? Initially, you might have just counted, okay, I see one, two, three hearts, and that's the number that's going to go up top. Divided by the total, you might have added them up, but it's given, so you could just say, okay, divided by 13. Top divided by bottom, you know what to do. Again, you know, you know what to do. Move the decimal over two places and 23%. Give yourself some DAP if you got that. If you got stumped on the next one, then you might have thought, well, you didn't, you didn't go over how to do a not problem. But you basically just count everything besides a diamond. And there are nine of those. Or the way I think of it is there are four diamonds. One, two, three, four. So just subtract those out of 13, that gives us 9 that way. There's still 13 total, dividing those two, and we'll get about 69.2%. I kept another couple of uh, decimal points around for this one here, or places. Now, if you know the not, it's really uh, beneficial for finding what is the probability of selecting a diamond. Because there's two choices getting a diamond or not getting a diamond, but both of those probabilities have to add up to 100%. And so then you could just take 100%, subtract that out, and what's left over is the probability of getting a diamond. Note that plus that gets you 100%. One more page to practice with here. Feel free to pause and try these ones. Assuming you have a bag of M&Ms has 12 red, three blue, six green, and four yellow ones left in it. You reach in and grab one randomly. What is the probability you pick out a red one? Um, just a side note, red M&Ms were banned from 1976 to 1987. They were thought to make you go crazy or have carcinogens in them, but eventually people were like, yeah, we, we don't care, just give us the red ones back. So red we see is 12 here, put that up top. We have to add all these ones to get the total, and that'll get us 25. And then we're going to do this one a little bit differently. You could just divide these with a calculator. Another way to look at percents is the percent is a number out of 100. So what can you multiply the bottom by to get 100? 4, right? So you could do top and bottom by that. That will give you 100 in the bottom. And then that gives you 48 up top so then you know it's 48 percent. So just another little trick that you could use if you don't want to use a calculator for instance. What is the probability you pick out a yellow or a green one? If you see or think add, you just want to collect the green and the yellow, 6 plus 4, 10. 
things that are favorable. Divided by 25 still. Let's use that 4 trick one more time. And that will give 100, this time 40 up top. And that's the same thing as 40%. The next style of question you might see is when you have multiple events. All the ones we did so far, there was only one thing happening at a time. Now you roll a six-sided die twice. What is the probability that you roll a five both times? What is the probability you roll a five? That's just one out of six. You pick up the die, you roll it again, it's still one out of six. You might think that it changes, but it really doesn't. It's still one out of six the second time. The question is, what do we do with both of these now? We could either add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Well, let's use process of elimination and see what happens. Let's start with subtract. 1, 6 minus 1, 6, we could get rid of that because that would give us 0, and that would say there's a 0% chance of that happening. That's not true. Let's try divide. The same thing divided by the same thing is 1. That would tell us that there's a 100% chance of that happening. That's not true either. What about add? That would be where you just add the top numbers. Since they have a common denominator, that would be 2 6, which is 1 3rd. That means it's even more likely to get 5 twice than it was to get it once. That's no good either. So we're going to have to multiply. When you multiply with fractions, you just multiply the tops together. 1. The bottoms, 36. Divide those. And we got about about 3% chance of that happening. Now, we're still going to roll the die twice, just one die. What's the probability that both times we roll it, we get even numbers? The even ones, of course, are 2, 4, or 6, so there's 3 of those out of 6. You could also call that 1 half. It'll work out the same way that way. And then we want it to happen again, so we multiply by the same. And then that ends up giving 9 over 36. 9 goes into 36 4 times. That's the same thing as 1 fourth or 25%. And that's it. Now, if you are uh, playing a board game, you might be more interested in this type of situation because you're constantly adding and then getting a total for your roll. So let's say you're playing Catan or Catan, whatever, and you are building a, a Shempire. You want to get sheep. But your little um, number is a 2. So you're waiting for a 2 to pop up. Well, notice there are 36 options total, and only one of them results in a 2. So therefore, you only have a 1 out of 36 uh, probability of rolling a sum of 2 with 2 die. What about, you know, you, you want to collect ore, and that's on a 12 it's actually the same thing because there's only one way to get a 12. That's also one out of 36. Those are the least likely outcomes. Anything in the middle is more. Notice if you rolled a three, you could get a two and a one or a one and a, a two. And that would end up being two ways out of 36 to get that. So feel free to pause and, and fill in the rest of this chart here. Which one's the most likely outcome for adding two die? If you said 7, you're correct, because that's the one along the diagonal. You could do 6 and a 1, 5 and a 2, and so on, all the way down to 1 and a 6. Notice they're all different ways to get it, because the red is the first die, the white is the second die. And those ones, there are, th there are 6 of those, so therefore probability of rolling a sum of 7 is going to be 6 out of 36. So that chart is super helpful if, if you're a gamer there. Okay, next board. What is the probability uh, in this situation? Feel free to pause and try this one out. The probability that it will rain is 80% each day, Monday through Friday, this week. What is the chance it will rain every day? You could just put five spots here to represent each of the days of the week, excluding weekends. And 80% is the same thing, move the decimal to the left this time, as 0.80. We could put that in each of the spots, multiply those. Another way to write that is 0 0.80 to the fifth power. Note, this is not the same thing as 5 times 0.80. That's something different. And then that ends up giving us about 33% likely. And then one last example here. Feel free to pause and try this one. 
This one's a little tricky because the assumption is what is the probability you pick out a green, you set it aside, you reach back in, then you grab a blue. What's the probability of both of those things happening? Well, if we do the green, that's 6 out of 25, just like it would have been in any situation. That got us our green. Now we want a blue. There are three blue, but what happened to the total? We took a green out, so then it bumped down, and now it's only 24. Then we can multiply those, and we're good. But if you're thinking, wait a minute, there has to be a way to do it with 25, that is true, but that's under the assumption that the green one was put back in. They call that one replacement, if you ever see that in problems. Then multiply across, we get 18 over 600. Divide those up with the calculator, and it gives us a perfect 3%. So my hope is that you found these really helpful and this is a good foundation for you to build on to solve even more complex probability questions.